It's good. Yeah. Yeah. This one is uh, all from Minaro. Uh, yep. Guest has an update on Fast Ride. Yep. Okay, so yeah, I'm Will Fanson. Uh, probably know a bunch of you guys already. But uh, yeah, I'm working for uh, Linaro and uh, the power management team that we have there. And uh, this is about uh, cluster idling, something that we've been working on uh, for, for a couple of years now. Uh, it's, it's a long story. Uh, I'm trying to keep it a little bit, a bit short here today to so don't uh, yeah, get you too um, tired of it. Uh, it kind of touches the thing that uh, Raphael just uh, talked about, about uh, idle management of, of CPUs and, uh, and groups of CPUs. So let's just go into it and um, feel free to ask questions at any point and interrupt. So I'm going to have a little bit update on what, what the latest achievement and where we are right now in this, uh, on this topic. And uh, I will also uh, spend some time uh, explaining a little bit about uh, the work uh, that is specific to ARM, so I apologize those that are not interesting to that. And I will look into some improvements that, that we can, uh, that we can uh, make in, uh, from, from a generic point of view. So first of all, just a quick background on the problems that we're trying to, to solve here. So we have this uh, uh, topology here where we have a bunch of CPUs uh, in in different uh, topologies and different clusters, wh whatever you want to call it, and uh, in some cases they they are sharing idle states and they are sharing power rails, and we need to uh, we want to uh, s uh, in some way or the other power management them t together, and uh, the CPU idle framework, as uh, Raphael told you, is not really feasible um, uh, to deal with this in an uh, I know an optimized manner, so to say. Uh, but also from a functional point of view, there's problems. And the, the main problems that uh, I wanted to point it out here is that uh, in some, uh, on some, some hardwares, in particular mobile hardwares, embedded, uh, embedded products, uh, these uh, clusters, so to say, and wh where they share idle states, um, have uh, last man activities to deal with. So, for example, on some ARM uh, hardwares, there is a, like a geek that needs to be uh, decoupled when you do this uh, power collapse of the cluster, for example, and you need to do this in a synchronized manner. And uh, on, uh, on particular Qualcomm hardwares, uh, there is even sleep states of the system that needs to be communicated to a firmware when you do this power collapse of the, of the cluster. Another thing that is uh, really, really common on, on uh, older platforms, that's a problem that's not been solved, it should have been solved for 10 years ago, but hasn't been, is when these uh, power rails that uh, uh, are being shared on other uh, resources. So if you uh, do a power collapse of the cluster, it may mean that uh, an MMC controller loses uh, context of its register, for example. So somehow we have to synchronize this. When the MMC controller is in use, you need to prevent this, this uh, power rail from being uh, cut. So, so then there's no way to deal with this in the kernel. Have not been a way to deal with this in the kernel. So yeah, and uh, even if this is legacy, uh, the last thing I was talking about, it actually in many new platforms is uh, also possible. Uh, and it's sometimes even configurable on a platform basis, so not even on SSC basis, but some platforms, uh, platform vendors might decide to, I want to save one of those power rails, so I hook everything up in on one rail, for example. So these are the main problems that we're trying to solve with this uh, work on cluster idling. So we made a plan a couple of years ago, and in principle, this is what we have been working on. Uh, a bunch of infrastructure code was needed, and that uh, we, we saw that uh, the current generic power domain, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but in principle it gives you a, a possibility of describing the topology uh, and, uh, and power management of devices that sits in this topology. So you can group devices in, in uh, domains and so forth. So the, uh, the, that infrastructure code was almost ready to take on this problem but it needed to be extended to cover CPU devices. So that has actually been uh, 
queued up for uh, very recently now in 5.2. And uh, on top of that, we needed a, a governor that could take, uh, uh, take on several CPUs, not only one CPU. That's uh, that's the job of CPU idle governors that only deals with one CPU and we saw the slides early from Raphael and uh, there was no uh, interaction between uh, idle states of different CPUs. So that is something that we have been uh, extending uh, the MPD governor to deal with as well. And uh, the last thing that uh, we didn't want to reinvent everything, of course, uh, as make it as easy as possible. So we s we'll keep using uh, CPU idle to select the idle state per CPU, but use YMPD to select idle state for a group of CPUs. That's the idea. So all of the stuff on, on, on top there is done, and there is a code upstream for that to deal with this. But now we're actually doing the, the de deployment task. And that is the all specific part in this in, in this uh, session. I'm going to into, uh, go into a little bit of the details of, of that. Uh, there is a uh, series posted, and that is to deploy this uh, support for the so-called PSCI uh, firmware interface for all, uh, uh, particularly used on ARM 64 based platform, but uh, also on, on a couple of ARM uh, legacy ARM platforms. So I'm going to, there's a couple of uh, slides here, I put them up mostly for reference, but uh, we can go through them a little bit quickly. So first of all, we needed to do a new change in DT uh, to be able to describe this topology. And we just more or less just reused the topology description that was available for, for power domains in the NPD. But the main thing is that we moved the CPU idle states uh, description out of the CPU node. And uh, this is the legacy way with a flattened model. And now we're moving it into the power domain nodes instead. So that's the, that's the main thing that we, that we are changing, I would say. So each CPU will have uh, uh, a handle to, uh, to a power domain. So it will be attached to a power domain, more or less, which allows it to, to, uh, to have a topology. And in the PCI node that describes the firmware part of the PCI interface, uh, you will have the, the, the topology of, uh, of the different uh, domains described. So in this particular case, we have two CPUs. And there is um, idle states for, for each of those CPUs. But there is also a, a so-called master domain, uh, the cluster power domain, that uh, these two uh, or attached to, which has the cluster uh, states. So these are the CPU nodes over here, and these are the cluster nodes. So this allows you to describe the topology. So this is just a flow chart uh, to describe this series that we posted. Uh, I'm not going into the details, but uh, it's mostly here to, to reference. If Anybody wants to review the series and want to understand uh, a little bit uh, how it works, you can always pick up these slides and try to understand a little bit better. Uh, I think I want to point out a few things, and that is the, um, uh, there has been a lot of discussion, the discussions about this called PCI OS initiated mode versus platform coordinated mode, and that is exactly related to the thing that Raphael was talking about before. So. Uh, this is a firmware uh, thing that you can decide to implement if you, if you want to not want. Uh, and in the platform coordinating mode, which is the mandatory mode, uh, the, the firmware will behave in the way that Intel firmware behaves. So there is no communication among uh, uh, coordination between CPU cluster idle states. That's uh, just decided by the firmware. So you just uh, give the states to the firmware and the firmware will have to decide. But in the OS initiated mode, uh, the state of the cluster, the shared, the, shared, uh, the shared things among the idle states is actually communicated from Linux to the firmware. So you actually get a, a, a possibility to take into account all the residency and the target durations of all the CPUs before you actually give the vote for the cluster. So it's a different method <coughs> of, uh, of communicating that. So uh, what I wanted to point out here with th these two slides is that we are taking this OS initiated mode into account uh, and uh, depending on if we're using that mode 
uh, this is this is the more important part there. So if this OS initiated mode is 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 used, uh, we will give the responsibility to the YMPD and the YMPD governor to uh, select an idle state for the cluster. But if we are not using OS initiated mode, which is the Intel way of doing things, uh, we'll leave the decisions to as it was before by the CPU idle governor. So this is dis decided. Uh, based on how, if you're using this topology way of describing your idle states, and if the firmware has support for OS initiated mode, then you give the decisions to the MPD and that topology to select the idle states. Otherwise, it's bef as before. So I think the, the more important uh, or the interesting part here is the, is uh, how it what happens during uh, during the idle path. So this uh, CPU idle select and enter function is called, and um, the the governor there ha has uh, picked an idle state for the for the CPU, and uh, then you hit the the backend part of this. You enter the PCI uh, firmware driver and the CPU suspend function, uh, and the new thing here is that we are using uh, to to be able to. Uh, to take advantage of this topology description in YMPD, you need to have runtime PM deployment, because that is the way how you uh, do the reference counting on on, uh, on what is active and what is not active. So uh, there is some logic added there in that path, uh, where we consider the actual idle states that been selected by the by the CPU idle governor, and depending on that state, you will do. Uh, a uh, call to PM runtime get of that particular device that is corresponding to the CPU. And if you do, uh, uh, or actually you do put, uh, because you want it to go idle, of course. And uh, when you do that put, you will uh, hit the all the logic inside the uh, YMPD. And uh, if the logic in the YMPD sees that there is uh, no one active in my, in my uh, topology, in my domain, it will go and ask the, the governor uh, can you give me an idle state for uh, for this domain? <coughs> and uh, these are the new things that we have been adding to the to that infrastructure. So uh, inside this governor, you're actually looking at the at the CPU mask now. So it reflects uh, what kind of CPU that has been attached to this particular topology. So you walk through this, through this CPU mask and gets the yeah, it gets the next timer event. That's the only wake up event that, that we consider at this moment. And that's, that's, there is room for improvements there. But that, that's the way it works, more or less. So you ask the governor for an idle state for, uh, for uh, a group of CPUs. So and then, uh, yeah. Uh, that whole last is represented by a single idle state at the CPU level, right? Yes, so at the CPU level, you will have uh, only idle states that are specific for the CPU. So yeah, right. So the, as I said, all the cluster thing. thing is represented in a single idle state in a technical uh, idle state just by CPU idle, right? So it's, yeah, you can say it's like a single idle state, but it's actually uh, the deepest CPU, the deepest idle state for the CPU yeah, yeah. will we'll trigger this PM runtime yeah, calls. Right. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Exactly. So yeah. Yeah. Any questions on this? Okay. So, in the resume path, um, it's the opposite, of course. So you have um, you keep track of what kind of idle state that you uh, that you have selected, and you will do a get. PM runtime get to uh, power off, power on the cluster again, and uh, in in this particular case for the PCI case, there is actually this, there are callbacks in in the MPD infrastructure that uh, that gets that gets called to power do power on and power off, but we don't have anything for PCI at this very moment. But this is something that we'll probably have to add uh, going forward. I will come to that a little bit later. So yeah, as I said, this is mostly for references, this flow shots, and have a look if you want to uh, review the series, I would be happy. <laughs> so 
looking forward. I need some water. It's not really working. Okay, so looking forward, um, there is a couple of uh, things that uh, needs to be uh, fixed, uh, improved, optimized. And I have a couple of slides where uh, we can discuss those. <coughs> it really sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So. Uh, so first of all, to, to actually be able to deal with these last man activities that I was talking to, uh, talking about in, in the beginning here, uh, typically when the cluster is going to get power collapsed, you want to inform some clients on the system to do deal with these last man activities. And the obvious, uh, obvious, uh, what what we could do already today is to use the CPU PM. Uh, notifier and, some and cluster PM notifiers and uh, that is already being used in the kernel today so we'll why not use them but I decided not to uh, at this point at least and the reason for that is that I am I am a little bit concerned about the uh, latencies and, and scalabilities using those and uh, so uh, and it seems to be like this is going to be platform specific. Oh yeah, SSP. Uh. Uh, so let's take an example. The Geek driver is a cross soft driver. So. Yeah. So I'm just saying that we are might need to make this more fine tunable and more flexible. So this is what I'm um, thinking about. Um, but potentially we <coughs> could use those. Uh, those already exist, but do we want to do that? Do we want to keep using those? <coughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. So yeah, this is uh, something that um, I'm still exploring thinking a little bit about uh, uh, an idea I had was to uh, take advantage of the of the of the way of describing <coughs> the topology in in, uh, in the NPD and uh, use that infrastructure code uh, to deal with this kind of notification to deal with this last man activities so uh, another thing uh, that um, uh, we have observed is that, of course, in the in the idle uh, path, uh, we are very um, 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 yeah. We we don't want latencies and we don't want locking contentions or so all that kind of stuff. And uh, using uh, k time get is one of those things that we could. Um um, suffer a little bit from because there's a lot of calls to ktime get being uh, being done in uh, in the NPD uh, when you do these PM runtime get and put calls and the reason why those are there is actually to do measurements of the latency for how long the callbacks uh, are it takes to execute and that's to deal with this uh, PMQS uh, constraints so I'm thinking that uh, it's a bit uh, um it's a bit silly to do it for CPUs and it's a bit silly to do it always because in more or less it's like a, a tuning phase that you need to do to to find out these things so um, I'm looking into how we can and how we can uh, um, decrease the impact of using ktime get in the NPD and one thing that we did recently for uh, for the runtime PM uh, framework was to convert to ktime get monofast and uh, maybe we can do that for MPD as well. That should improve it a, b uh, a bit at least. And uh, yeah, maybe we should convert these measurements 
into a, like a tuning mode or something in the MPD and stuff. So in uh, yeah, I was just touch touching a little bit about about this. I noticed that in uh, inside the runtime PM core, there's a lot of calls being made for each and every transition that we do between these runtime PM states when we call uh, ktem get mono. And uh, I think we can do some optimizations in that in that pass as well. But um, it's still just this is just like ideas that I have, and I haven't really explored them yet. So we will have to see. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Another thing that uh, this is actually not really functional. Well, I wouldn't say functional, but it's not really working today or uh, suspend to idle. If you're using this. Uh, this way uh, of, uh, of of selecting idle states because it's um, uh, the whole uh, the whole uh, concept is based on runtime PM that runtime PM is working uh, or enabled I would say but that's not the case when you do suspend to idle and when you idle the CPU all the rest of the system has been uh, suspended and um, that means that runtime PM has been disabled so you cannot use runtime PM to select select the idle state for the cluster no more. So um, this is something that I have to figure out on how to, how to fix. And there is, a, um, yeah, I have a couple of ideas and I don't really know which one is the best yet, but this is not, I was just want to point out that this is not really working yet. So at this point, we're only reaching the idle state of the CPUs, the deepest idle states of the CPUs. And we're not reaching the cluster idle state when you use, uh, this way for suspend to idle. So this is something that we're going to fix. So I think I've already touched a little bit about this, but I've, I've talked a little bit about latencies due to K time get and K time get mono. And uh, there is more overhead inside the runtime PM core uh, when you do this PM runtime get and put calls for, for CPUs. And uh, we haven't done any measurement about that overhead, but uh, there is uh, a couple of bin logs released and, and, and locked and a lot of code being executed uh, for, for good reasons. But uh, for CPUs, which are a little bit specific, in principle, the only thing that we want to happen is to call these uh, these uh, callbacks. That's the only thing that we want to happen. Everything else is uh, more or less uh, a waste. So an idea that's actually been posted for like three, four years ago by a, a Qualcomm engineer, Lina Iyer, uh, suggested to invent specific APIs, uh, runtime PM APIs to deal with uh, CPUs. So this is something that we will have to, uh, we're going to look into again and see what we can do. Um, of course, it means, it has to mean that it uh, gives some, yeah, we have to measure and see that it has actually improved things. But this could also be uh, a way of getting rid of this K time get and put calls. K time get and K time mono get calls. It, it's, it's a different way of solving that problem. Yeah, so this is yeah, this is final things. It's just more or more or less improvements to MPD, or some bugs in the hierarchical uh, way of dealing with uh, domains. Maybe not that in interesting. This is uh, rather, this is probably more in interesting though. So the the governor in MPD today that deals with CPUs only take timer uh, timers, the next timer event into account when. Uh, selecting an idle state. So <coughs> this is something that um, uh, deserves improvements. At, uh, at this point, uh, I don't know, I'm not really sure how, but uh, I guess there's kind of two options there. Otherwise, uh, in, in one way, I want to get some information about the next IRQ and the next IPI, but
Yes, yes, I'm, I'm hoping for that in the long run. An another option is to kind of uh, extend the, the uh, share the more information between CPU idle governors and per CPU basis. So yeah, yeah. that's exactly how I see it as well. So, yeah, you so, so we want some kind of a per CPU information about yeah, next. No, I mean one CPU is waking up the cluster, not. I mean, what did you mean? I'm not sure. Follow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think it's time for the next session. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, measurements on, on uh, overhead or measurement on, on energy? Uh, on I mean, so, so the... Yeah. Much more energy it's a very interesting question, and the problem is that you want, you need something, you need uh, something to be comparable. You need to compare with something, and I don't, uh, I don't have anything to compare with because I only have hardware that supports either that mode or that mode. So. Oh yeah, but the problem is that if I don't have my changes, it means that uh, I will not reach those li lower undersets. Because the firmware doesn't, because the firmware. Yeah, okay. but it's, yeah, but that's like a silly, you compare uh, with a half enabled platform uh, comparing to full enabled platform. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. You can, you can do that, you can do that kind of measurement quite easily. Uh, that's, that's not the problem. I think the major problem that we want, that we really want to compare is between these different modes on the exact the same platform to see uh, how it actually uh, uh, improves things. So I, I know that for Qualcomm internally have done this uh, measurement because they have spent a lot of time in this OS initiated mode issue. So they, they have done the measurements and uh, the only thing that they are, they are trying to uh, work on this ARM trusted firmware thing that where the PC PCI implementation is to actually implement both these modes so we can just switch the platform between and, and try and see what happens. So, but what they've told me is that uh, on mobile, OS initiated mode is absolutely crucial. They cannot. Uh, but you would like to compare with the uh, uh, platform? Yes, I would do. A I would do. With and without. Yeah. Because it enables deeper states. Yeah, it's a
Okay. Okay. Thanks, Let's everybody. Take both. Is a coffee break, uh, 15 minutes break. I think it's in the room over there. Can I get back at the 10.